Hi everyone and welcome to another session of Otis for Educators. My name is Emma Foley and I'm a curriculum specialist here at Tech. Today you're joining us for a special course on using social media in the classroom. We also have Kaylee here today to help out in the chat box. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee. I'm also a curriculum specialist here at Tech. If you have any questions at all throughout the session, be sure to leave them in the chat box and I will get those answered for you. Great, thanks Kaylee. Let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda and get started. So taking a look at our agenda here, the first thing we're going to go over is the focus of this course. So what exactly will I be sharing with you today? And what can you expect to learn by the end of this course? The next thing we'll talk about is some of the benefits or the general uses of using social media in the classroom. Then we'll take a deeper dive into some specific social media examples. So the first set of social media that we're going to take a look at is going to be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. That's gonna be the bulk of today's course, but I do also have some other examples that we're going to take a look at and just talk about how you can generally use them. So that's going to be your YouTube, your Pinterest, and your LinkedIn social media apps. The next thing we'll take a look at is an example of social media, specifically social media in the foreign language classroom. So today I'm gonna to show you how social media can be used in a variety of content areas, but we'll take a look at some specific examples about how it can be used in the foreign language classroom. And finally, we'll wrap up with some best practices or some suggestions that we have here at Tech if you are looking to incorporate social media into your classroom. So let's move on into that course focus. So as I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about the use of social media in the classroom. So schools have been enforcing phone off policies for years now. And the main reason for that is schools are sometimes hesitant about what distractions will be brought on by students having access to digital devices, whether that be phones or tablets. But the focus of this course today is to show that it's time to invite social media into the classroom. I'm to show you some really great examples that you can use in order to really push your instruction by incorporating platforms such as Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or LinkedIn as I mentioned earlier. So if we take a look at the very basic definition of social media, social media is defined as a shift in how people discover, read, and share news, information, and content. So social media technologies are not limited to just some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. They can include things such as blogs, picture sharing, that's going to be your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, um, vlogs, wall posts, which we'll take a little bit closer look at in a little bit, as well as instant messaging. So we'll talk about a lot of these different examples as we dive a little bit deeper into those social media platforms that I've picked out for today. So now we're going to go over some of the benefits or some of the general uses of social media in the classroom. So here I have a nice graphic to show about all the different ways that you can use social media in the classroom. So social media can be a great way to keep students informed of current events. So we'll take a look at Twitter and other social media platforms that allow student, students to search different news sites and then see different current events that are taking place. Another benefit of using social media in the classroom is that it really can enhance those critical thinking skills. So we're always trying to teach our students to be critical thinkers and to really evaluate um, a different situation based on all the different information that they're receiving. One of the other benefits of social media is that it gives your students voice. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how it can make those students that are a little more hesitant and might be a little more in their shell come out through social media. Another benefit of social media in the classroom is that it allows students to connect with the community. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can create Facebook or Instagram pages for your school or even your classroom and use those pages to connect with the community. Showcase all of the great things that you are doing. 
Social media also allows for some long distance connection. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but allows students to connect with people that they might not necessarily have the opportunity to meet face to face with. Another big one here, we're always trying to teach our students to show digital citizenship. In other words, we want our students to be responsible when using social media. So one way to do that is to allow them to use it in the classroom. Through educational purposes of social media, you can also teach students to be a little more responsible when using social media for personal use. Another thing that I touched on a little bit already, but social media is a great way to showcase all of the great things going on in your classroom. So definitely use social media as a way to highlight all the great things you're doing with your students. Why keep those secret? You want everyone to know about the different ways that you are really reaching out to your students and the great amount of learning that's going on. And finally, social media is a great way to really reach that perspective enrollment. So you can use social media as a way to connect with prospective parents or prospective students and show them all of the reasons that they should come to your school or join your district. So moving along, now we're going to really dive into those social media examples. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to focus much of this course on these four social media platforms you see here. So I'm going to go through each one specifically and show just how great it can really be if used properly in the classroom. So just a general overview here of the four platforms we're going to talk about. The first one being Facebook. We're going to take a look at some different features within Facebook, including Facebook groups, polling, as well as what it means to go live on Facebook. What is Facebook Live? Then we'll take a look at Twitter, and we're really going to focus on the shorter, concise posts that can be made on Twitter and what that means for your students. How can you use that shorter um, character limit as a way to strengthen skills of your students? We'll also talk about the live chat feature, as well as how you can use Twitter for book clubs and incorporate that hashtag feature. Then we'll move into Instagram, where we'll talk about the template options, the stories feature, highlights, hashtags, and the stickers. So all really great things that Instagram has to offer. And then finally, we'll take a dive into Snapchat, where we'll take a look at the stories and how you can use Snapchat to have students individually message or send private messages. So some really great things here. So let's take a closer look at Facebook. So Facebook, many of you are probably familiar with Facebook already if you use it in your personal use. So there are some really great things that Facebook has to offer if you're thinking about incorporating it into your instruction. So the first thing I mentioned here is groups. Facebook has the option for you to create groups for each of your classes, and then you can use that group as a way to post discussion questions, you can assign homework, even make class announcements on that particular group. So one of the great things about Facebook groups is that you can make the group private. So only when students receive that invitation or other people receive that invitation can they join the group. So you won't have to worry about people who are not connected with either your school community or your classroom community contributing to what's posted on that Facebook wall. So this is a really great option if you're looking to keep it a very small group of participants and really monitor what exactly is posted on that Facebook wall. The next thing that Facebook has to offer is Facebook Live. So this is something that a lot of social media platforms have incorporated in recent years. Facebook Live is a way to record yourself. So in the classroom, what this might look like is recording tutorial videos. So this can be done by either the student or the teacher. So here I mentioned some different information about how you would use Facebook Live to record tutorials for your students. So this is a great way for you to connect with your students even after the school day has ended. 
So not only could you live stream to students, but they can also continue to benefit from those tutorials, especially if they need help with homework or different assignments that they're completing outside of the school hours. So Facebook Live is really simple to use and it, the benefits really outweigh the process it might take or that uncomfortableness when you first start using Facebook Live. So I really highly encourage you to use Facebook Live as a way to reach out to your students, especially when the school day is over. Another thing I mentioned here is that Facebook Live could be used as a field trip alternative. So what does that mean? So not only can students access your Facebook Live or your live streaming, but they can also watch Facebook Lives recorded by other Facebook users. So they can use this as a way to explore a place that maybe the time is not right and you can't either due to funding or things going on, you're not able to actually physically visit that location. Students can watch a Facebook Live video of someone touring that place. So you could even use this to incorporate instruction into different landmarks. So places that students might be doing a project on, but they don't really know anything about it. Sure, they can read a website or they can watch YouTube videos, but another way for students to really get, dive into what's going on at that place is they can use, they can watch Facebook Live. They can watch people recording themselves as they explore this site. So just another alternative for using Facebook Live in the classroom. The last thing I mentioned here is polling. So Facebook has a built-in feature that allows you to poll. So this could be a spin on a traditional vo voting exercise in the classroom. So obviously we've all used voting to have our students contribute to either preferences or something and then took that data and turned it into another project. So students can use the polling feature on Facebook to do a spin on a voting exercise and then work with the same data um, computations afterwards. So all some really great options if you're looking to incorporate Facebook into your your instruction. So now we're going to take a look at Twitter. So Twitter, as I mentioned before, is a little bit different than some of the other so social media platforms because you are limited to a certain character count. So we're going to get into that when we move into this last section here about strengthening student skills. But to start, we're going to talk a little bit about the live chat feature. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the social media platforms are starting to copy each other in terms of what they have to offer. So Twitter also has an option for users to go live. So you can take this live chat feature as a way for students to kind of have this conversation through posts and things like hashtags. So you can arrange for all participants, whether it be students in your class or maybe even students and teachers in the school to participate in one thread that's going to be controlled by the hashtag they're using. So one thing that we do recommend here is if you're going to use uh, Twitter as a way to have a live chat, you probably want to have a moderator. So someone take on that role to make sure that the conversation goes in the direction that you want it to. So although students have the liberty of writing whatever they want and then tagging it with that hashtag, you definitely want to make sure that the conversation stays relevant, that students aren't just adding the hashtag to your chain of posts and what they're contributing has nothing to do with the conversation at hand. So one way to control that is through a moderator. So definitely something to consider if you're going to have students participate in a live chat via Twitter. Twitter is also another option to put a spin on your traditional book club. So you can divide your students into small sections, whether it be um, in one class or maybe you want to do a couple of students from each of your different classes are all reading the same book. And you're going to encourage them, instead of writing their reflections and submitting through either your learning management system or submitting something through email, they would post their reflections on Twitter. So this is a way to get students incorporating the social media, but also writing about what they've read. So this is another option just to kind of keep conversation in a way that it might keep students engaged and also incorporate those social media platforms. And this is a great option to have because this can also take place either synchronous 
synchronously or asynchronously. So students, because they're using Twitter, they don't need to post at the same time. If they're writing about a book that they're reading, they can post about that book, their reflection, whenever they get the opportunity. So maybe one student starts posting about the chapter on Monday and the other students don't get to posting until Friday. It doesn't mean that they're at two different points. They're still going to be posting and they're having that common discussion. They're just posting it whenever they get the opportunity or whenever they finish the assigned reading. So definitely something to keep in mind about using Twitter for book clubs. And then finally, the last thing I mentioned here is what I kind of touched upon earlier. Twitter can be a great way to really strengthen skills that we're looking for ways to teach students in the classroom. So one of the major skills that we always want to encourage our students to be is to be really concise in their thoughts. We want to avoid students kind of rambling on and on and get to the point. One way that Twitter encourages students to get to the point is that they limit students to 140 characters. So in a given tweet or post on Twitter, students are not going to be able to ramble on. They have to get to the point if they want their followers to see their message. So this is a good way to teach that skill of summarizing as well as being concise. Another way that you can strengthen a skill of your students is you can teach them to use Twitter to edit. So one fun project that you can incorporate into your classroom is you can have students edit tweets of people who are famous for including spell check errors. So we all know there are some celebrities or some public figures out there that tend to just get their thoughts out there and they don't proofread what they write. This could be a fun exercise for students to discover those tweets, and then apply what they know about editing and grammar and edit those tweets to be a little more um, grammatically correct. Great, and Emma, if I could just jump in here, we're having a really awesome discussion in the chat box. So we were discussing kind of how to approach it if you don't necessarily want to add students from your personal account um, as a teacher. So we mentioned that a great way to go about that for any of these social media sites could be to create a teacher account that's separate from your personal account. That way you're able to keep that separation of leisure and also fun and work, keep those separate and have your students do the same. We also would recommend maybe taking this up with your school if you wanted to create a school page for your students on Facebook or Twitter or even a grade band page. This is a great way to keep that nice divide and still have your students engaged in social media. Absolutely, Kaylee. We'll be going over some of those different guidelines in terms of keeping your work and personal life separate and also those school or community pages when we get into the guidelines section of this course. But really great ideas and keep the chat going. I'd love to hear some of the other things that you guys have in terms of social media. So now moving right along, we're going to take a look at some ways that you can incorporate Instagram into the classroom. So here I mentioned a couple of different features within Instagram, and if you take the time to really explore the app, I'm sure you would notice that there are a lot of other features in addition to what I have mentioned here. So Instagram has something called a template. So that's going to be what you have when you are creating a story. So if you're familiar with Instagram, if you look at, I've actually included text Instagram page in the resources below this video. So definitely check it out so you can see all of these things and how they are used in a professional way. So Instagram is something called templates. And templates could be a way for you to post something to your Instagram story. And it can be something that's just a free write. So one suggestion I give here is that you could use the template option to include an inspirational quote. So when I was teaching in the classroom, I always was looking for ways, whether it would be in my morning message or even just something that I would put on my students' desk before they started the school day. I wanted something that was really going to boost the morale of my class before the start of 
the day. Because to me, if students are in the right mindset, learning is going to flourish. So you could have students, it be required that students check out your class Instagram page before the start of the school day. And you could use that Instagram page as a way to post some sort of inspirational quote. So there are so many sites out there that really have great quotes that you could even subject search by subject. So you could post about something that might be happening in the classroom that day. And this could even get students, as we spoke about earlier, to critically think. So you could post something that's a little more um, vague and you could ask students, well, what are your thoughts? What do you think we might be talking about today? What are some things that you think we might be learning about? This could be a great way to open discussion and also boost the morale of your students. Another thing that I've touched on a little bit already, but Instagram has something called an Instagram story. So this is something that's unique to your personal page and it's something that you are posting, whether it be pictures or text, and it's going to be available to any of your followers. If you have a non-private page, then pretty much anyone at on Instagram can access it, but if you're keeping your account private, only your followers are going to be able to see that Instagram story. So this is a great way for students to receive insight into either your personality, or as I mentioned here, it's a great way for others to receive insight into your, your school or your classroom. So you'd use that story feature as a way to kind of highlight all the great things that are going on in your classroom. And then what you can do is you can save any story that you create to what Instagram refers to as a highlight. So say you're teach you want to post pictures of all the great math activities your students are, are creating in the classroom or participating in. You could then post those stories later on to a math highlight. And then you could have this online portfolio of all the great things that happened in your classroom from September to June or whatever your school year might run. You could also do a number of different, you could do a different highlight for every subject area. You could do a different highlight for every class section if you're teaching multiple sections. So there's a lot of different spins on how you can use highlights as a way to showcase all the great things going on in your classroom. I also mentioned that it could be a great way to showcase all of the great things happening in your school. So whether you're using Instagram as a class page or a school page, really great feature to check out in order to showcase to others all the great things that are going on. As I mentioned already, it's a great way to show a video portfolio of what you're doing in your classroom and all the great learning that's happening. The last thing I mentioned here is stickers. So I incorporated this little fun piece of in Instagram because I really truly feel like it's a great way for students to show their creativity. So you can tap into the creativity of different students in your class by asking them to create a sticker. So a sticker is going to be a little image that they might include onto their Instagram story. So if students are using Instagram to post things about what's going on, you might ask them to create a sticker that relates to that post. So I included a resource below the video that gives you some more information about the steps you would take to create a sticker. And I definitely suggest taking a look at this and seeing how you can incorporate. This is also a fun thing for the art classroom. So you, could, you can involve other teachers in your school, such as the art teacher, and have this a way for you to kind of collaborate on what you're doing in your classroom and what they're doing with students in the art classroom. So now moving into our last major platform we're going to talk about today, Snapchat. So this happens to be my favorite of the four because I think Snapchat has a lot of things to offer. And unfortunately, I think in recent years, sometimes people forget about Snapchat because it's not the one you're seeing on the news as much. You're seeing Instagram, you're seeing Facebook, you're seeing Twitter. But Snapchat really does have some really great things to showcase as well. So Snapchat does have an individualized messaging feature built within it. So in other words, you can send messages or snaps to people that are your friends. So this is a great way to kind of create communication in a way that's different from verbal communication. So one of the other things to mention here about the messaging on Snapchat. Snapchat's messaging disappears 
after only a few seconds. So it's a good way to keep it also a little private. So if you're worrying about that privacy feature, Snapchat might be the way to go because once it appears and people view it, your friends view it or whoever's receiving your message, it disappears and they can't access it any longer. So you don't have to worry about somebody holding on to perhaps someone sending student work and you don't want someone to be able to reaccess that student work. So just some things to think about, about why messaging on Snapchat is a little bit different than the other platforms. I also mentioned here that Snapchat could be used for pen pal activities. So we're always looking for ways for our students to connect with other students. So of course, students would have to be friends here in order for this to happen. But you, as the teacher, you could facilitate this and allow your students to make connections with other students outside of their own classroom community. Snapchat also, like many of the platforms that we've explored today, also has a stories feature. They also have something called Geo Stories, which in a second we're gonna hop over to the computer and see what exactly Geo Stories are in something called Snapchat's Snapmat. So we'll take a closer look at what this is and how you could incorporate it into your instruction. So moving along, now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other platforms. So as I mentioned, we spent a lot of time talking about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I do wanna mention these other three platforms here, but we're not going to take as deep of a dive into them. So many of us are familiar with the uses of YouTube in the classroom. YouTube can be a great way to supplement some of your instructional materials because it provides students with a video as well as some reading material. It's also a great way to keep your students engaged because they're hearing about different topics through people other than you. LinkedIn, if you're familiar with LinkedIn already, you might be using it in a professional capacity. So, LinkedIn is great because it focuses on the professional field. So you could also take a look at the LinkedIn for other professionals outside of your own. So this might be something more that you might explore as the teacher, or if you're working with older students, you might encourage them to think about what they would include on a LinkedIn portfolio, uh, profile. What ways might they highlight their, their strengths and their weaknesses in order to attract employers when they enter into the work field? So we're always talking about career and college readiness. This is a great way to really get students thinking about how they're career ready by showing them LinkedIn and asking them to create a LinkedIn profile that either they can make public or they can save for when they're ready to enter the workforce. The last thing I mentioned here is Pinterest. So Pinterest is another social media platform, a little bit different than some of the others because it really is a picture gallery. So it's a way that students can kind of create this picture portfolio of all the different things that either interest them or are related to a certain topic area. So one thing I think about is Pinterest can be used as a way to kind of paint this picture of a certain area if they're doing a project of a certain part of the world. So many different uses. If you do a quick Google search, you'll definitely see some ways that teachers are using Pinterest in the classroom. So now we're going to take a look at a specific example. So I mentioned earlier that social media can be a great way to kind of boost the instruction of any content area. But we're gonna specifically take a look at how you could use social media in the foreign language classroom. So here I have some examples of how social media could be used in the foreign language classroom. So we're gonna talk a little bit about video, video blogs, which are typically referred to in the social media world as vlogs. So vlogs are a way for students to kind of see what's happening in other parts of the world. And one great part of using uh, social media and having students watch vlogs of people is that if they're watching a vlog of somebody living in another country, they can turn on English subtitles. So this is a great way to get students kind of double dipping. They can also emerge themselves, immerse themselves in the language of that country, but they can also stay they can stay on board and understand what's happening by turning on those English subtitles. So I mentioned here it's a great way to engage students in the language of the country and also teach grammar. So most videos have that option for English subtitles, so students can also follow along. 
I mentioned here vlogging, which I've already touched upon. One of the major sites that a lot of uh, social media users post their vlogs to is YouTube. So you may be familiar with this and just weren't familiar with that term vlogging. But vlogging is simply a video blog of something that's going on in that user's life. So there's a lot of YouTube vloggers out there that do tours of the country and even just really showcase the culture of that country. So this is a great way to get students learning about the country when they can't actually travel. So obviously, if we think about a college level, it might be more suitable for students to visit that country, but that might not be an option for your middle or high school students who are learning a foreign language. So another option just to allow students to explore that country and the culture. YouTube can also be used as a language tutorial. So a lot of times students become a little tired with the monotony of reporting to their foreign language classroom every single day and following that same routine. Why not incorporate a social media platform like YouTube to have students learn the language. So there's a lot of different YouTube strictly language tutorials that are recorded by either people living in that country or even just other educators. Now we're going to hop over to the computer because I want to take a look at what's called a snap map. So these last two here go along with each other because on snap maps you're going to see that uh, Snapchat users are posting what they call Geo Stories. So Geo Stories are a feature on Snapchat that allows students, uh, allows users to post stories about things going on in that specific location of the world. So just heading out of our presentation here, we're going to head over into Snapchat and the snap map. So here I have pulled up a snap map. You can find this through a quick search of snap map in a Google, um, on the Google homepage. But as you can see here, I'm kind of zoomed out just to show that they, these are the current stories. So as I mentioned earlier, Snapchat stories do disappear after 24 hours, not those private messages that will delete once a user has opened them, but stories remain on your story for 24 hours. So these are all recent stories that have been posted around the world. And just to zoom in a little bit closer, obviously we're, since we're based out of New York here, we're most likely familiar with Central Park. So maybe this isn't something that would happen in a foreign, we wouldn't be asking our students in a foreign language classroom to visit Central Park, but just an idea here you see. This is somebody posting right now about the snow in Central Park. So if we were to zoom back out and look at a foreign country, you can see here all these different um, colored sections. This is going to be areas that the students can explore because a number of different posts have been recorded. So obviously if we take a look at this snap map, snap map here, it's going to look a little bit different today as opposed to what it's going to look like tomorrow or next week. One of the other things I want to point out here is a lot of concerns might be with, well, what are my students looking at? If I can't see, I can't stare over every single student's shoulder while they're looking at this snap map. It's one thing to remember that Snapchat does, like many of your other social media platforms, does have privacy features. Um, and flagging purposes built into the actual social media platform. So if it's something that's inappropriate that you're worried about your students seeing, chances are it's not going to remain on Snapchat within seconds. It will be flagged as inappropriate and taken down. So definitely some built-in features there that help you to monitor when you can't stand and monitor each student's activity. So heading back into our presentation here, the last thing we're going to talk about today is some best practices. So as we mentioned earlier with those great comments in the chat box, there are some practices that we encourage you to use if you're thinking about incorporating social media into the classroom. So the first one is going to be post regularly. So platforms like Facebook and Instagram especially, they really require quality content regularly in order to be successful. So in order, in other words, if you're going to take on the management of one of these accounts, whether you're going to be 
the educator in the school that's monitoring what gets posted to a class page or even a school account, you might want to make sure that you're allocating the appropriate amount of time and the resources to create content. So things like setting up a calendar for when you're going to revisit the content on that page and make sure that you're posting regularly. So whether that be daily posts or even every other day or maybe just weekly posts. But definitely want to keep keep on top of posting to that class or school page. The other best practice that we mention here is updating your profile. So it's really important that, especially if you're using any of these social media platforms, that you're routinely updating the contact information. So that's going to be things like your school name, the school website. We know that sometimes schools use different websites. You wanna make sure that that link is always functional and that you're not having a link to a, a broken link on your social media page. This way, whoever's visiting your page can contact you and be successful in that contact. The third best practice we mentioned here is social guidelines. So it's really important that your school and your classroom have solid guidelines in place before you introduce social media to avoid issues like cyberbullying, posting inappropriate content, etc. So one suggestion is to begin some with some lessons before you actually even incorporate the social media platform. Start with some lessons that have that emphasize that online bad behavior really has real world consequences. So if you wouldn't do it in class, they shouldn't be doing it online and really drive that message to your students. The fourth thing we mention here is age restriction. So this is a big one. Keep in mind that students are not legally allowed to have social media accounts if they are under 13 years old. So if you are an elementary or even in that beginning um, part of middle school, we really suggest that you don't encourage your students to use social media before that age. And finally, the last example we have here is to set an example. So just because your students use social media for fun doesn't mean that they automatically know how to post in a professional manner. So one thing that you can do is you can give them a few examples on your classroom Twitter or Instagram to show them what it's like to be an appropriate poster. So taking a look at our agenda here, we've covered a lot today. We went over some of the major platforms for social media as well as touched on some that you might already be familiar with. I hope everyone learns a lot and really learned some great guidelines for how you can incorporate social media into the classroom. I'd like to thank Kaylee for moderating in the chat. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Emma. I learned a lot. I can't wait to try out some of these on my own and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And I'd like to thank Brian behind the camera. Be sure to do the quiz and the survey in order to receive credit for today's course. And as always, if you have any additional questions after the end of this course, you can click on that Ask Otis button and a member of our team will get back to you. From all of us here at Tech, have a great rest of your day.